Right, how to get... how to merge an old photograph with a new photograph so it looks a little bit like you've scraped back time and you see an old photograph in the modern setting. These are dead easy. Um, there was a train going past. Um, right, for this I'm using Photoshop CS6. Ooh, the new one. So forgive us if I'm a little bit not knowing where things are. I've only had it a few days. Um, but right, I'm going to assume that you know how to get the pictures into the program itself onto the separate layers. Um, layers are the key to this and this will work in any graphics package which uses layers which is most of the professional ones or semi-professional ones. It won't work in the likes of Microsoft Draw or Paint but uh, GIMP, Corel Paint Shop Pro, all of those it will work in. Plus Photoshop, Premiere, uh, not Premiere, that's video, the Photoshop um, Elements which is the cheaper version of Photoshop which is great. It hasn't got all the stupidly advanced features which you never ever use and you've then you end up paying 900 extra dollars for. Uh, but anyway, right. There's the background. That's the new, or relatively new, which is from Google Earth, which is I'm using just because it's handy. Because I'm as you know, I'm not in South Shields and I can't jump out and take my own photos. But if you can, if you have the old photograph with you and you go out with your camera and you take a new photograph from approximately where the old one was taken, this makes this a lot easier as well. Uh, so we've got that there. Layer 2 is where the new picture is. You'll notice layer 1 is quite far away, but we can zoom in and zoom out to match that up. I'll show you how to match things up in a minute because matching up is the key to making this successful or not. The first thing you notice here is the picture's a little bit skew with. So we need to rotate this picture. So hopefully we can assume that this roof line here should be parallel well to the ground. It should be a like a horizon, you know what I mean, it shouldn't be running off to to the left. And if we just check that here, we can see the same roof line there is parallel, so we want the copy to be parallel with this. So that's simple. Um, you need to transform the picture, which you can do in two ways. There's a keystroke, which is Control T. Um, Oh, there is also image. Um, mm, 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 mm. Now let's just find it. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Yeah, it's transform selection. That's it. But I haven't made a selection. So the marquee tool there. Hide the bottom layer. selection transform selection see you've got these boxes around it now if I just press control T that same thing would have happened but if you look at the cursor here it's turned to the, the, the arrows that means rotate move it closer that means resize and that means move so we'll move it like that Oh, do that in a minute. What we want to do is rotate the image so we've got to move that until there. Uh, come on, I'm using the graphics pen again. It's dead sensitive, so there. So now if I just rotate the picture, I'll rotate. Come on. See, I told you Photoshop 6. completely different. It's 
because my selection was wrong. Stick with what you know, control T, don't try and be clever. There you see, it's moving there. So now we've moved it. So that is more in line with the house underneath. You've got to confirm the selection there. Right, now it should just be a matter of resizing and tweaking and pulling and pushing to get it more or less in the right place. Um, it would help if you can see through it, which fantastically you can. Go here, opacity. If you take that right down, it'll make, see, go see through. Now should we make the top one smaller or the bottom one bigger? I think the bottom one bigger because it's far too far away. So if we just get that to be sort of centre-ish to show the detail that we want. Um, Why is it doing this? I don't want them both to resize. You can see because it was pretty much matched before, it's a reasonable match there. You haven't got to start pulling angles and perspectives about. Um, and if you try and match it up with the two things, there's, there's the main house there obviously, and there's this house here which is this gable end. So just bring the transparency down a little bit. See, it doesn't fit exactly because oh, I didn't want to do that. I've just flattened the layers, so just ignore that. I've merged down. I pressed the wrong one. Should have been Control T, not Control E. So you see the problem we have here if we try to match up these houses here for the perspective going along that way you knock this perspective right out there you see if you try to follow this line down you knock the house out um, which you've got to decide which one you want which is your most important focus. I think in this case the most important focus is the house. Well, it is. No question about it. Um, so just get that lined up again. Because what I would be tempted to do here, because it's not such a fantastic match, is once that is done, and that is done, that you, I don't think you can really get any better than that. You've got your two layers, stick them together, which is Control E. No, select first, Control E. So now because we're 
don't really want to look at this. This is a better match. This is where we want all the information. So, anything that you don't like, crop it out. So we'll have this, like this. Um, so that you can still see the the bit there that we don't really want to really do. So we'll copy it there, and that is the finished photograph. So we've got the old and the new. It doesn't 100% line up, obviously, because in a different position, um, different focal lengths and all sorts, but it does give you a really good idea of what was what was where, or how the place looked in the past, as opposed to what it is new. So that's that. It's not hard, it just takes time. Um, and if you've got two photos which virtually match, then that takes a lot of the work out. Because you can but pull these images all over the place. You can tweak them and warp them and all sorts <coughs> um, but that's basically it so have a try it's it's addictive once you start and it's rewarding once you get one that does actually work fantastically well this one's okay it's not brilliant but there you go that's it easy have a try if you need to know how to get the stuff into the, the layers just give us a shout I'll, I'll email you how to do it it's it's a bit of a clot in this version 6, so which is why I missed it out. But you should know how to do that anyway. So that's it. Deedly do.